my dear Heem. Uh, today's topic is uh, business cycles, unemployment and inflation. Uh, basically, the business cycle describes the alternating increases and decreases in economic activities over time. And basically, there are the different phases of the business cycle. Some of them, they are called peak, when everything in the economy that is enjoying boom. You can say the people are enjoying high level of income. They are enjoying inf uh, they are enjoying all this, they, they have the employments, prices are rising steadily and the, the producers and the supplier they are happy with the increase in income because uh, of the incentives of having higher profits, they keep on producing more, they keep on hiring more and more of the people and because of the excessive demand, they are uh, trying to match the increased demand with the increased supply. The second phase is called the recession when the all of the economy that is going down, uh, inflation that is going up, unemployment is going to be decree, uh, increased, people are having lesser income as compared to the peak. Throw is the deepest part of the recession when all of the economy is at its slump, people are suffering high level of the unemployment, they are having a uh, the low incomes, the demand is too low to encourage all of the producers to produce more and more. So obviously when they are not producing any more, so they are firing laborers. So laborers are losing jobs, unemployment is going to be increased. So all of these things they are uh, described as the true. Expansion is when the economy is going to be recovered the people are getting jobs there is increase in demand in order to increase the demand supplies are supplying they're hiring more and more laborers so economy is expanding growing so these are the four different uh, cycles ups and downs we may call the peak and uh, is called the up recession downward through the deepest part and expansion that is increasing part of the business cycle. Now the question is why the business cycle fluctuations? Obviously there are the economic shocks. Economic shocks means the unexpected events in the economy that happens. It could be the natural calamities or it could be in the man-made uh, all of these uh, the wars and these sort of things that could uh, contribute towards the business cycle fluctuations. The more economy, economic shocks are there, the more economy fluctuates. So prices are sticky downwards. Prices are sticky downwards means that when the economy is facing a downward, uh, there is no more fluctuation or there is no more flexibility downward. So a, we can say the stickier prices means if aggregate demand is falling and firms cannot decrease price. Obviously they have their own uh, reservations or because they have to cover the, the cost of the production so they cannot decrease the price but on the other hand aggregate demand is falling. So firms will end up selling lower units of the output that is the sales will fall output would fall, GNP fall and overall the in unemployment that would increase. And uh, the economic uh, response entails decrease in output and employment. So basically what are the causes of the uh, this business cycle shocks? So one of the cause is the irregular innovations. When we call the irregular innovations means okay, there are the major innovations that happens in the economies but these are irregular and major innovations may trigger investment, consumption spending. For example, computer and internet is one of the major innovation and inventions that change the entire structure of the economies. So change in technology bring shocks and affects productivity. The second is the uh, monetary factors, third you can call it, 
As the money supply increases by the monetary authorities, inflation shoots up and it also contribute towards economic shocks. The political events is also one of the reasons for this as the economy adjusts to political events like peace treaties and war, economic strains can occur. So we can say the financial instability is also one of the reasons for this. Rapid asset price increases or decreases can spill over to the general economy and cause uh, booms and bursts. And the way we had seen the recession of 2007 and the recession which is going on because of the coronavirus in 2020, the recession of 2007 that was basically led by the excessive money, overvalued real estate and unsustainable mortgage debt. If you look at the unemployment, unemployment cannot be defined simply whosoever is not having job, we cannot say them unemployed because in the economy, the labor force, they have their own definition. Those people who are below 18, above the 65 years old or 60 years old, they cannot be called unemployed. They are not part of the labor force. So, we can say the number of unemployed divided by the total labor force, if we multiply with the 100, then it's called the unemployment rate. For example, the example is given to you. I'll explain later on the different uh, types of the unemployments. But basically, uh, what are the cyclical impact? Durable goods, they affect mostly as compared to the non-durable goods because uh, the durable goods, uh, the non-durable non goods, spending on the non-durable cannot be postponed. While the spending on the durable is more expensive, for example, we can call furniture, TV, fridge, all of these things. So spending on the durable goods is more volatile than more non-durable goods. And we can call the non durables are all of these services and food and clothing are there. So there are the three different types of the unemployment. One of them is called the frictional, the other one is called the structural, the third one is called the cyclical. Frictional unemployment that refers to when the people are moving jobs in between the jobs. They're leaving one job and moving to the better job. So the time period when they stay unemployed in between the jobs is called basically the frictional unemployment and this is the short lived we can say it is a necessary part of the economies people have to move from one job to the others so they have to stay uh, unemployed for a while so we cannot say that this is a this is a natural part of the unemployment we call frictional unemployment structural unemployment Obviously, this is a long-term unemployment when certain skills become obsolete. For example, those people who have been uh, uh, used to the typing, the typists are no more required because of the invention or the innovation of the computers and the internet. The third uh, type of the unemployment is called the cyclical unemployment. This is caused by the recessions. And the recessions, uh, the way we had seen in 2007-8, people were unemployed. That is because of the recession that happened. So, uh, when the firms, they respond to insufficient demand for their goods and services, output and employment that falls. Next is the uh, the definition of the full employment. Full employment means when cyclical unemployment is equal to zero. So, a frictional unemployment cannot be equal to zero because this is the natural part of the economy. And say, whenever we call the full employment, rate of unemployment is called basically the natural rate of unemployment in which the uh, structural and frictional both of these are the necessary part of the economy we can call the natural part of the economy it has to have in the economy uh, in any case so
so natural rate of unemployment is achieved when the job seekers are equal to the job vacancies when the demand for labor is equal to the supply of labor hence we call the full full employment rate of unemployment is called the natural rate of unemployment okay next is the gdp gap what is the economic cost of the unemployment one of them is called the gdp gap gdp gap refers to the difference between actual gdp and the potential gdp when we call potential gdp it means the level of gdp which can be achieved by employing all the resources optimally gdp at full employment is called the potential gdp as uh, according to hawkins law that every one percentage of the unemployment that leads to the a uh, 2% fall in gdp gap that means that economy is producing below the potential the way we have seen the inside the production possibility curve all those there who are lying inside the ppc they are working or they are producing below the potential in non economic cost you can see the number of the non economic cost all of these are quite easy you can see it yourself let's come to the inflation inflation the general rise in price level is called basically the inflation and inflation that reduces the purchasing power of the money uh, the way we have discussed in order to measure the inflation obviously we subtract the last year's price index to current year's price index and then divide by the last year's price index and then multiplying by 100 we can have the 2.8 percent as in this case we have seen the last year's index it was to 7.3 and current year is to 1.6 so when we compare last year's with the current years then we can see the 2.8 percent price is gone up and there are the different types of the inflation one of them is called the demand pull inflation the other one is called the cost push inflation demand pull inflation basically excessive spending or relative to the output when demand is more than supply then obviously the central bank that is issuing too much money excessive supply of money that cause uh, inflation and excessive spending that is caused by the demand pull inflation on the other hand the cost push inflation that is pushed up by the rise in cost of production or the input cost so when the raw materials or the cost of production that increases and obviously then supply they will have to increase the prices so that increase in prices because of increasing cost of the production so this sort of the uh, inflation is called the cost push inflation and secondly we can say the supply shocks because of any reason we can say the natural calamity could be one of the reason for this the supply is reduced and shortage of supply that give rise to the prices is called one of the cost push inflation if you look at the demand supply if both of them they are in equilibrium and then if we show a fall in supply the left will do, then it will cause a rise in price is called basically the cost push inflation okay and then uh, you must have seen and we have discussed earlier the real and the nominal and the real uh, in case of the nominal is not adjusted uh, not adjusted for inflation well the real income is adjusted for inflation so whenever you have to see the percentage change in real income then obviously we have to uh, reduce the percentage change in nominal income minus the percentage in price level so if we take out the inflationary effect out of the nominal income we can reach to the changes in real income who is hurt by the inflation fixed income receivers fixed pensioners savers creditors so whenever the inflation goes up value of the money of the savers of the creditors of the fixed income receivers that goes down that is causing them hurting by the inflation 
and who is unaffected by the inflation those people who is uh, who are receiving a flexible income when the cost of living is adjusting or the debtors the payback loan with the cheaper dollars cheaper rupees thank you very much and the have a good day all of us